Mike Wells here in Los Angeles, California. We're here today to talk about a very powerful yet misunderstood topic called STEM mastering. We have a lot to cover, so we've chopped this into three videos. This video, STEM Mastering Overview, we go through the what and why around STEM mastering. Video two, the STEM mastering process, we go through the how STEM mastering works. And in video three, STEM mastering applied, we go through a real world example for a track that I've done with the STEM mastering process. The term STEMs came from the broadcast industry and what it represents is a group of instruments mixed together to create a stereo submix. For instance, let's say you're doing a rock track and you have drums, bass, guitars, and vocals. You can take all of the drum microphones and mix those down into a submix, one stereo file, and call it drums. That would be your drum stem. You could then take all of the electric guitars within that track and mix those down into one stereo file. That is your guitar stem. Same with the bass, same with the vocals. Now you end up with four stereo stems. So your mix has been broken down from a stereo mix into four stems that when you play all of those stems together, you get the stereo mix. Think of it this way. Through the mastering process, you're gonna be doing a few functions. Compression, limiting, EQ. You're gonna be taking a mix from its dynamic range of the mix level to a reduced dynamic range of a commercial gain mastered level. So when you get a mix, for instance, strap a limiter across it, crank it up to today's commercial gain requirements. By doing so, you're gonna hear a number of things. You're gonna hear where certain frequencies build up and start to collide and cloud the mix and cause problems. You're gonna hear some instruments might be farther background in the mix and when you crank it up with compression and limiting, they may move too far forward where you don't like their position anymore or the artist or the mixer doesn't like the position anymore. These kinds of things can change and move around when you're doing a lot of heavy lifting in the mastering process to achieve commercial gain. So by doing this analysis up front, by checking out a mix and cranking it up, you can uncover these things like the things you wanna preserve in the mix, the things you wanna address in the mix through the mastering process. And with this analysis, you can determine if the track is a good candidate for stem mastering. In the stereo mastering world, there is a phrase, you gotta give something to get something. Those gives, those trade-offs are Loss of transient attack, loss of punch, loss of power, loss of detail, shifting of instrument positions, frequency buildup, those things you give, what are you getting? Loudness. If we look at the stem mastering process, we are presented with an opportunity to make space at the stem level so that when we do stereo processing such as compression, EQ, limiting, we are not making the same trade-offs. We are giving up nothing and we are getting everything. Let's move on into video two and talk about how the STEM mastering process works.